Stemming from the problem of the bridges of Queensburg, we're going to ask the question, how do we use every edge in a graph? And remember, Euler was the one that worked with this on the bridges of Coinsburg. And so a lot of the term terminology of this section is attributed to him and his work. But first, let's set up some vocabulary. Starting with what's called an Euler path. An Euler path is a path. It can start anywhere at once, but that path must use every edge with no repeats, which was the idea of the bridges of Coingsburg. Can you cross every bridge without repeating? So for example, if I had a graph like this, and we wanted to start at the bottom right corner here, is it possible for me to connect each bridge only once, or each edge only once? And as you can see here, it is possible for me to connect each of these as I go up, kind of numbering them, starting at the bottom corner. And we go up one, down two, up three, down four, and back five, we've covered every single bridge or every single edge. This is an Euler path. And actually, one extension of an Euler path that we might be interested in is what's called an Euler circuit. And remember, circuits start and end at the same point. An Euler circuit, then, is a circuit that uses every edge, and again with no repeats. And of course, being a circuit, it must start and end at the same point. So maybe an example of this might be this little house-looking shape here. Put an extra point in the middle of the house at the base. And we want to know, is it possible to connect each point on the graph? And it's also going to be important as I do that, do I end up back at the same place? And as you can see, I can do that. Starting on the side, we go across for 1, down for 2, up for 3, cover the roof for 4 and 5, and then down the outside for 6. I guess there's a point in the middle. So 7, 8 and 9. And notice we started and ended at the same point. So this would be considered an Euler circuit. Now with both these examples, it was possible for me to find a result. When we worked with the bridges of Coinsburg, we said it was not possible to get a result with the bridges. And so the big question we might be interested in is how do we know, is this possible? Well, Euler came up with a theorem to determine if an Euler path or an Euler circuit was possible. It turns out that Euler paths can have at most two vertices of odd degree. And this is why the bridges of Coingsburg failed, because just about every vertice was of odd degree. 
If you want an Euler circuit, though, it must have all vertices of even degree. And so some examples of that, if I set up maybe this first example, where we're going to connect like this. If we count the degree of each of these points, the first point has degree 1. Um, another point next to it has degree 1, 2, 3, 4. Going to the top, 1, 2, 3. Um, the center bottom one has 2, and the other one has 2. Notice that there are two vertices of odd degree. Because there's two vertices, we can make an Euler path, but not a circuit. And you could probably do so pretty quick by just drawing along the outside edge. And you can see that we go over all of the options. What if I make a little more interesting one? And we're going to connect these dots all the way around, also down the center, also give it some diagonals. And then we're going to have a special path that loops around the outside. Well, now let's start at the top left. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, degree 4, 1, 2, degree 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, degree 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, degree 4, 1, 2, degree 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's of degree 4. Notice all of these vertices have an even degree. Because they all have even degrees, we can do both an Euler path and an Euler circuit. And so you might try 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 around back to where you began. And you notice we've got the full Euler circuit and Euler path. But the bridges of Koingsberg, remember we represented the north bank, the island, the central bank, and the east bank with our dots. The east bank was connected to each area with a bridge. And then there were two bridges to the north bank and the south bank from the island. But notice here, the top vertice has degree 3. The eastern vertice has degree 3. The southern vertice has degree 3. And the other vertice has degree 5. There are plenty more than two vertices of odd degree which means neither is possible, which is why we could not do the bridges of Koingsberg, no matter how long we worked at finding a path or a circuit. OK, so now that we've kind of established when it's possible, the next question you might have is, how do you find the correct Euler path? Well, I'd say probably the easiest way to do it is to just try it. Pick a point and start trying to connect the dots and see if you can do it. Um, it's important to note that if you're looking for a path, start and end at odd degree vertices. 
If they're all even degree, it doesn't matter. But if you're looking for a path, you need to start and end at the odd degree, because that's what gives that odd number the starting and ending. That's probably the easiest way to do it. There is a formal way to do it if you can't figure it out by just trying it. It's called, I'm going to say, Fleury's algorithm. These mathematicians with interesting names I have a fun time pronouncing. The idea of Fleury's algorithm is that you start at any vertex. Um, an odd vertex if we're doing a path. Then choose an edge that deleting keeps the graph connected. Then we will add that edge to the circuit or path, depending on what you're looking for, and delete it. And then we just kind of continue this process until it's done. Let's see if we can look at an example where we do just that. Let's go back to our nice little shape that we played with in the prior video, where we had A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And the outside was all connected, we said inside box was connected, and then diagonally they were all connected. And so let's start at A and see if we can make a path. There are lots of answers, no one answer. But as I highlight it, we're going to imagine that line no longer exists. So if I highlight that A, B, and go to B next, if that line doesn't exist, the rest of the points are all still connected to each other, so we're good. If I then go down to C, we'd still have a connection remaining from all of the points. So let's go to C next. I don't want to go to A because that's going to be my final destination. Uh, let's go to F next. It doesn't really matter at this point. Still, everything else, there's a way for all the other dots to connect with each other. I can go back to D. Then maybe I want to go to B. Adding B to our list. The next place that we want to go, probably going to go to E. It's the only place to go. From E, if I went backwards to D, point G would be completely disconnected from the rest of the graph. So after I've added E to my list, the only one that makes sense now is to go off to G to keep it from being disconnected. Then back to F. Then we can go up to E. down to D, down to C, and then finally back to A. And in this way, we have now gone through the entire graph using every single edge only once. We went from A to B, B to C, C to F, F to D, D to B, B to E, E to G, G to F, F to E, D to E to D, D to C, 
and finally C to A. And you notice each graph, each edge of the graph only was used once. That completes my Euler circuit. Now, quite often, the Euler circuit is not possible. So we're going to often be interested in seeing, is it possible to Eulerize? We'll call it the Eulerization, the graph. In other words, can we just repeat a couple edges to complete the entire graph all the way around? That's what we're going to do. We're going to add duplicate edges to create an Euler circuit. And the process to do so is quite simple. We fix the problem. The problem is it's not, Eulerized, it's not an Euler circuit if there are vertices of odd degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect odd degree vertices. or make a path to connect odd degree vertices. Now, it's important to note that we can only use existing paths. We can't just create a line that goes out and around unless that path already exists. So let's do a couple examples starting with one of our favorites. This one seems to keep coming up. Notice this graph has a vertice of degree 2, a vertice of degree 2, but the other ones are of degree 3. So if we want to Eulerize this graph, we are going to repeat lines to give us even degrees, which is nice and easy on this one. We just add an extra path to duplicate that bottom line. And now they've gone up from degree 3 to degree 4. And now it is possible to find an Euler circuit through this graph. Let's try another example. Let's take a look at this 3 by 3 grid. And let's say the 3 by 3 grid is literally just connected all the straight lines, which means we've got a degree 2 on all the corners and a degree 4 in the center. But all the middle ed vertices have degree 3. Now, we're not allowed to make a new journey that doesn't exist. There's no way to connect that diagonal line. So when we Eulerize and repeat, we're just going to connect them by connecting through points, through connections that already exist. Notice when we do that, that little extra lines that I've drawn have increased from degree 3 to degree 4, both that left and bottom vertice. And the corner vertice has gone up from degree 2 to degree 4 because there's now two extra lines. And so we could do something similar with the other threes, increasing them to degree 4 and the top corner to degree 4. And now we have Eulerized this graph. But that's not the only way we could have Eulerized the graph. Quite often, there are multiple options for how to make an Eulerization of a graph. Looking at the same graph with the same problem, we've got threes on all those middle vertices. The other ones are twos in the corner, and the middle one's a four. Another way we could have Eulerized this graph is we could have connected all the threes to the center. And now the threes have gone up to fours. And they're all connected to each other. Now in the center, it's gone up to a degree of 8. But now there is an Eulerized graph. 
And sometimes what we're interested in as we Eulerize these graphs is what's the most efficient Eulerization? What's the fewest extra bridges that we could make to make this a Euler circuit or a path, depending on what we're working with? So it's now your turn to practice with a few of these graphs, finding the Euler circuits, or Eulerizing the graphs so that we can find an Euler circuit. So today we've taken a look at graphs where we're trying to use every edge in the graph. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how we can use every vertex in a graph rather than every edge.